Morning. Not sure what I'm going to paint, so I'll make something up. This is the uh, the Aquafine Daily Bounty paper that I bought 50 sheets of in a block, 8.3 inches by 11.7 inches. It's 140 pounds. It's fine grained. It's not not as rough as a lot, but but for 12 pounds, 12 pounds 20p, uh, that was a good buy. But I only use it for wetting wet, like the the Fabriano. It's not really suitable for painting dry. Well, at least not by me. I'm not really used to it. But uh, anyway, there's my palette. I've squeezed some fresh paint out. I've just bought. Well, I've actually got rid of the cadmium yellow Winsor Newton artist quality. When I say get rid of, I'm so stingy. I turfed um, the lemon yellow out of one of these uh, uh, full pans and, 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 and scraped it, the old cadmium artist quality into into the empty one. So I haven't wasted any. I, I hate waste. I hate painting waste. Um, when I first started painting wet in wet with the with a large butcher's tray, like uh, uh, the the marvellous uh, Manson, I'm just trying to show you a palette that I probably had for years and years. Yeah, well, that's the original one. I have had that for over thirty years when when Ron first published his books. But we'd squeeze out the student quality paint. The reason we used well, he recommended Cotsman 21mm tubes. Is one because you, they, they come in quite a large quantity for a watercolour, but you didn't feel mean about using it because there's nothing worse than, than using a little brush, a little brush to do a big watercolour. How do you how do you do a sky with a with a well, even a, a small brush like that? It's hard work. So he, he reckoned squeeze out your paint, fresh paint, so you've got fresh, cheap paint when you need it. Only problem is, you squeeze out more than you'll need, which is fine, which is good, but you don't want to waste it. So you don't scrape it off and throw it away and start again another day with a fresh lot. Uh, so the compromise was, and I thank Stephen Cronin for this, using it dry, which uh, I did for, for about two or three years. Uh, but the problem with, with dry student quality paint, it takes some scrubbing to loosen it up. But what I do now is to keep it in a stay wet palette box and I, I spray this tissue paper with water and it keeps the, the paints lovely and soft. Although one, two, three, four, five of these are fresh. But so we have to be a bit careful with those. But uh, it, so it never really goes dry. The, the, the ones that I haven't uh, added to, like the light red, the alizarin and crimson, the burnt number always seems to dry, but they're still soft. It's, it's damp, so you've got paint when you want it. Now, another tip. I'm sure you do, do this. The paint manufacturers won't like it. But as you squeeze out the tube and roll up the, uh, the base of it, what I do is to use a brush and sort of force it up, like toothpaste. Roll the brush over the over the bottom of the tube. So look, I've got every bit of paint out of that. Usually it'd be wasted. But look, so that's a, that's a tip for you. You don't have to take it, of course. Right now, what we're we going to paint? Well, something with water in, something probably with rocks in. And uh, I might use a little mop to do some trees. But what I want to do is a contrast. Is try to get some some heavy green deep green trees in in the in the middle distance uh constable was great at this with his sketches you the contrast it wasn't light green it was dark green against a lighter field color so bearing that in mind this is one i did last friday i think and i quite like that it's doing well on facebook and quite well on youtube um the wet in wet sky well i love wet in wet skies it's a little more absorbent, I think, than the Fabriano, but it's still I'm still going to use it because it's it's such a cheap, good paper. Uh, something like that, but I wanted to get maybe smaller trees. What I like about this one is the darker trees in the middle distance. But I want to do a bit of a field, maybe with a stream. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So 
weather paper, very dry day today. Again, it's very nice, lovely weather. I hope you watched Wimbledon. I'm not a great tennis fan, but uh, I, I do like Wimbledon because it's such a major event. It's the sort of tennis tournament of the year. And, and Federer won again with absolute ease, didn't he? That's so what's the uh, doubles match with the mum. We couldn't lose, could we, Britain? We had a Britain in both sides. So we, we did come first at something. And Chris Froome is doing a right in the Tour de France. He maintained the yellow jersey yesterday. I should watch that later on. I love my bit of cycling. For those of you that know me, I go cycling with the old men. Every Tuesday morning along the River Wander, which I haven't painted for a while. But all of these with water are sort of inspired by the water in, the, in our little river. The Amazon is not. Right, so that gives a warmth, that raw sienna gives a bit of a warmth. And then we'll go in with a bit of light red and a bit of that lovely rich ultramarine. And just... Oh, we can do all sorts of funny things. Remember that this dries a lot lighter than when you put it on. It's about 50% lighter as it dries. So we want a bit of nice bit of bit of cloud coming across here. While it's wet like this you can do lots of things with it. A bit more red in there. So I like streaky skies. Oh I have to remember the good colours are are quite uh, moist so We owe Ron Ransom a lot as he designed this uh, the, the wet in wet big brush watercolour using the, the large hake. If you haven't got one, I would highly recommend it. They're, they're not expensive, they're, they're about probably no more with postage, nine or ten pounds. So probably cheaper in an art shop if you, if you can find an art shop that will sell them. You don't have to pay for the postage. I'll just reclip this now. You can dry it, dry, the, dry it if you want, just to fix it, which I should probably do. Stop it soaking in too much, but I don't want the paper bone dry. But that'll still get lighter. Right, let's put a bit of bit of countryside in now. So a bit of distance, a bit of bit of bit of burnt sienna, I think. A uh, raw sienna, sorry, and a bit of blue. Just get a little bit of distant moorland, maybe a bit of Dartmoor. And then we'll put some colours underneath that. Bit of natural raw, raw sienna. Not sure if I'll put water in it, it'll happen. Now, a bit of this cadmium yellow. Let's put it through space and see what it does. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, let's put a bit of a pond in. Why not? And then we'll mix a bit of sienna with, with that. As that dries, we can go over with some detail. Right, pond. Warmer colours coming towards us. Try and keep that. Remember that I've got a pond there, so I mix a bit of bit of, a bit of paint grey with that. I think just a bit a bit darker. 
Yeah, I'm happy with this uh, cadmium yellow. The, 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 the artist quality was just too strong. It just overwhelmed even the darker colours, like ultramarine and the burnt sienna. Right, okay, so. Got some nice greeny, dark greens. Don't you wish you were doing this instead of watching me do it? Uh, get some nice bright green now. And we'll have texture over this. Just a little bit dull, so let's just get some more yellow in there. Getting some sun. I don't think I'm going to etch out any rocks. Oh, this is gorgeous. Have not used the artist, the uh, student quality for a long time. I used to use it. Right, okay, so now we want to put in some texture on there now, but I, I, I'm going to use my... Well, I, I, having mentioned a, a mop, I'll put this triple O, it's a lovely little brush, super brush, but I'm going to do it with a hake as far as I can. So let's just put in some detail in the background. I want to dry it first so because if I, I put the background in, the trees and stuff in the background, <coughs> it, uh, it will just bleed in and I'll lose it. So I'm just going to dry it. So headphones off. Okay, so now we're going to we're going to do a bit of middle distance, but before I do, I'm just going to put a bit of reflection on the pond of the sky, just a little bit. And I can drag down some reflections into that. As I'm waiting. Right, let's make some nice dark green. So let's use a bit of, bit of sienna. It's a bit loose so take some water off the brush. The big problem with uh, when you use the hate for the first I was gonna say few years is the amount of water in the brush. It, it holds a ferocious amount to trap the unwary. So now let's get that nice and so now we've got a nice greeny or well, greeny dark. So let's put in some good texture. Now I'm painting with the edge of the brush here. You can use even a bit, a bit of paint grey and a bit of the yellow. A nice dark green. Just simple modern. Just a tiny bit of water just to lubricate it. I'll put some blue behind this. A lot of noise going, a chainsaw going, dog barking. Right. Oh, it's a bit too much, I think. Turn that down a bit. Oh, 
Okay, now we'll put some warmer green with some sheer. Just some stuff around the, the pond. Wherever we go down to Cornwall, which has been quite a lot over the years, we go through Bodmin, and there you can see a couple of lovely ponds. Really, really lovely. Right. That's too thick. Spread that around a bit. Just a bit of a reflection. show. Right, uh, paint's grey, really dark green. I'll put a little bit of texture in that foreground right here, but not a lot. Uh, just want to just get that edge of that pond straight. Hardly shows really, but. Okay, now we'll do a bit of, bit of bluer background, a little bit of detail just to, to stretch it back a bit and sort of blue yonder or the grey yonder. Usually I do this too soon and it just bleeds into nothing. There won't be anything in the distance. Okay. Uh, or maybe we could just show a little bit of very, very light blue. It probably won't register. It'll go to nothing, I expect. But it might, it might just give a little bit of a contrast. Right, uh, now we want some Edgy stuff, so it's a bit of yellow, a bit of that uh, grey. Ah, that's a bit naff, isn't it? So let's just get a bit of the uh, burnt sienna and a bit of that cadmium yellow. Bit of paint grey, just dust it in. Very simple for a Monday morning, and I reckon I'll put some birds in that. Uh, just going to do a bit of a, a bit of nice green, a warm green. So cadmium yellow, burnt sienna, and Payne's grey. Just get a little bit here. Right, I don't want to do any more than that really. 
a very simple ball and so uh, put some birds in I think what's a sky without a few kestrels and raptors good word isn't it a bit of red I'll put, I might put some figures in alright ok coming over the hill but you don't normally see more than one at a time, but I'll put a couple in. Just hovering away. Uh, right, let's do a small, small brush. Get another palette. We'll put some figures in that. Give us a bit of scale. I don't know where, but... Uh. So there's my cabin yellow that I scraped off my palette. My plastic tray. I've got it on my fingers already, look. Right, okay, now we want some nice red, but a bit of, bit of umber for, for some figures, for a couple of figures. Uh, one in there. And nice red. Red against all that greeny colour. A little bit of reflection there. Well, Bit of, bit of dark, bit of dark trap. These are all artist qualities in this box. So we just put a little bit of that. I'll give it another one as well, another red one. Another one, uh, Let's do a, do a bit of, I like this hooker's green and, and cobalt. It's a lovely, lovely green. Put a head on it. From the, uh, what Ted Wesson used to call best colour on the palette, filth. I don't want these colours, or the heads, to be too big. Okay. Right, I'll... Uh, Close the palette. I'll sign it with a little pen. And that hasn't dried yet, but uh, I'll put it in a mount. So there we have a nice little more than seen. Hope you like it. Very, very simple. I'll just see if I can angle this camera. It's, uh, I always find it difficult because I'm on the side of it looking on. Oh, look at that. Well, that's all right. No real point of interest other than the two figures, just to give a bit of scale. I didn't really want to put any houses on it, it's just a nice... What we've got here are cool colours coming to, through to warm colours, so that the distance is shown with the cool blue-grey at the back here. And the warm colours, the, the siennas, the mixed with the yellow, that they, they they come forward, they give that illusion of depth, which we try to capture as representational, or in representational painting. Abstract, you can you can do what you like, uh, but even that, it's it's, it's bled into the damp paper underneath. But that's okay. It's given these trees a little bit more, or the hedgerows, snow walls, or whatever. Right. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll just give you a bit of a zoom. And then you can see the see me little figures. And I come across the pond. Painting ponds and lakes are quite easy, really. If you remember to put to put to put in the water what is reflecting in it. If you're looking down, you're looking at the depth of the, or the overhead sky. But if you're looking out, you're 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 catching more of the light lower down, merry angles. Um, but I've reflected some of this back here because I'm sort of fairly close to it. 
But uh, anyway, enough said for me. See you soon. Bye bye.